Most of the men are still conservative because they don't want to be tagged in a certain light. You know, as sisters, if we fight at home, work we don't. Oh, you are able to separate it? Yes, because okay. we are looking the for money. money. <laughs> Hi guys, it's me Abakuma Datsin here on Honestly Speaking and today we've been blessed with a superstar queen. She's an ex-beauty queen, she's an influencer, she's an actress, she's a content creator, she's also the CEO of Black Sheep Foundation. She's passionate about helping young kids grow and aspire to do more. Let's take a quick look at her works and productions and when we come back I'll tell you who I guess is stick and stay. I left my phone here. Kujo, have you seen my phone? Scarlett, you staged your own kidnapping? How dare you read my messages? You staged your own kidnapping so you can get money from your mother? I needed the money, okay? But you're a monster! No, I'm a beast and if you dare breathe the word of it to Kamari, I'll tell her I slept what, with you. What the? What? You didn't sleep with me? Oh, who is she going to believe? Lover boy. What you just read is a Pandora's box. You they are not open it. Okay, guys, so by now we all know who I'm here with. I'm here with the ever so beautiful Della Sayade. Hi, Abba. <laughs> the crowd is going wild. Della, please pronounce your last name again. Della Sade. Della Sade. Yes. Well, welcome to Honestly Speaking. Please, before we start, put your, put your right hand on your chest and raise your hand. Ha. Yeah, let's okay, go. where's the Bible? Because there's I don't no, lie. Let's not call God. Too much. <laughs> but please. Okay. I, and then you mentioned your name. I, Della Sate. Promise to speak the truth. Promise to speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth okay, until so I help. disagree. <laughs> <laughs> so help me. So help. Okay, let's just go straight in. I want to get to know you a little bit. Okay. I know that you are an actor. We all said, we said it, right? Yeah. But let's let's do a little bit about, let's go back to like your childhood. Who was Della Sade as a five-year-old? How did you get into where you are now? No, I never thought I would get to where I am now. That really? I've said it so many times. Like eh. I have never been one to be in front of the camera. Not camera per se. I, I mean, my 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 uncle was a photographer, oh, so we started hard. taking pictures when we were kids. Oh, like we go to the studio and actually take, take pictures. Uh, hey. We have props and stuff. Okay. So I think maybe I I don't really shy away from the camera, but I never thought I would be an actress or I'll be in the entertainment industry because. We, I mean, I always wanted to be, I remember I wanted to be a pediatric nurse. I wanted okay. to be a dietitian. I wanted to be part of the cabin crew. Girl, okay, wait, pilot, let's, let's go back. Whether... When you were in secondary school, what did you study? I studied general arts. Okay, what did you study in uni? I did project management. Oh, okay, so then how did we get here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take yeah, us yeah. back. See, I think it's just, it, it comes to me. Okay. It's, so what I'm, was I'm your with... first, sorry, what was your first, day on like a set how did you start first day on a set yeah like like is it a movie set or photo or i mean obviously the photo shoots you've been doing it since you were a child so let's yes. say movie set. how did you like how did you start my going? very first okay. one was on set with um so by then i was signed to links links okay. had um entertainment they had Richie. yeah yes okay. they had a subsidiary of links that signed models and i didn't want to do music videos so which was like, okay, there's a kiddies musical is coming and there's a role for me that he wants me to play. So that was like actually my very first. I think I had, no, I hadn't, I hadn't done the extras yet, but I, see, I've forgotten. Like I've misplaced the dates. It's okay. But that was like my first major character that I played. So it was Kitty, the sugar, the, the movie. Mm. So people know me as Adia Pena. Like some oh. people still call me Adia Pena because I was Adia Pena. In okay, the, okay. So that, okay, and then after him. that, I had um, another one by, was it called? It's famous. Okay. And then I did Public Figure. Like it just kept coming. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm one person that if you give me an opportunity, I don't want to disappoint you. So I bring my my best at that, that moment. I know that. My best at that moment. moment. Even though it won't be as satisfactory for you, but You'll do your I best. do my best. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's so what. let's just let's go back. Let's go back. 
So you started doing the music videos once, 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 once. No, I wasn't doing music video at all. I said I wasn't the, going to the, do music video. The idea for now, was it? So the idea, it was a musical. Oh, it was a, a movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it was a movie, bad. but you know, oh. it had all of these music videos in there. Okay, so when did you, when did you feel, when did you see that? Oh, I actually do have passion for this. Oh, I'm good. Let me start doing movies because I know you've been in movies now. Like yeah. When I was in school, I was in a drama club. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was in a okay. drama club. Okay, uh -huh. that's the part I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was in a drama club and I used to direct instead of be in there. Okay, like the plays but, and stuff. Yeah, school. because I wasn't the one that, I'll, I'll show you how to do it, but I wouldn't do it. Okay. Because I didn't want to be the one to do it. I didn't want to be the fit, like, I don't want to be there. Everybody, like, dilla, dilla. I okay, never so wanted that. Okay, so how did you get into influencing? How did that come about? Well, I think it's more of people wanting to associate with my brand more than they wanting me to create content for them. Do you get okay, it? Okay, so let's go back. How did we, how did Della the brand come about? Exactly. So okay. um, it's the fact that I'm not obsessed to be famous. I think it's a very important thing. In as much as you want people to know you so that you can get jobs, if you're obsessed with it, you do just anything to that maybe some of them may not align with the idea that you have of yourself and how you want people to see you. So I have a way that I want people to perceive me. I have a way I want people to talk about me in rooms when I'm not around and I keep constantly working towards it. Okay, I yeah. see that. So what was Della doing before she became like the influencer, content creator, like that? Yeah. What so were you doing before? All of, before the movies and all of that, mm -hmm. I did the pageants. Before the pageants, I did, I was doing photo shoots, modeling, blah, blah, blah. You said pageants, how many? Because I know I you did were two. Miss Malaika, right? Yeah, I did two Which pageants. one did you do? I did Miss Malaika and I did Miss Africa. So I was Miss Africa, Ghana. I went to rep represent Ghana in Nigeria, which was Miss Africa. Okay, but baby, but you see, you are saying that you do want to be in front of a camera, but Yes, but the thing is, it comes me. to me. Yeah. That's the thing, the thing comes to me and you see, it's, ab it's not about what you find yourself doing always, it's about what you do with the situation that you're in and how you milk it. Because I kept realizing that, okay, God, maybe just God, just that God wants me to do this, what God wants me to do. Or God wants me to put me in the position where he feels like I can impact people in the space that I am. So he wants me to go in that direction. Like every time somebody asks me, so acting, but I told them that honestly, I feel like it's my calling to be in this industry because I'm a church girl. Okay. And, people, and I teach Sunday school. Oh, cute. So you see, the thing is, people have all this perception about people in this industry. Yeah, I feel you. And it is up to some of us who carry the name of God on our head to also prove sure. to them that you, you can, can do, do this, this and, and you can do that, that as well. I feel you. It's giving Megan me good. <laughs> it's giving Megan good. Okay, I want to ask, so what's the difference between pageant queen Della mm -hmm. and actress Della? What's the difference between those two? When who who was Della as a pageant queen, and who's Della as an actress? Do you see the correlation there? Well, so with the the pageant was what brought the exposure, okay? Because that's where I started from. Okay. I was doing the photo shoot, I was doing ushering. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do the pageant. I was one of those ushering jobs that I was on, and then someone comes. I feel like your figure too, babe. It's like you were born like this. <laughs> So, you, you were born like this, you have, you have the legs, you have the face, you have well, the Well, I mean, when voice. I was little, they used to call me Miss Ghana. Uh, uh -huh. I never wanted to do it. Girl, so, I my think friends you were, were even, My friends were, actually, honestly, maybe, because mm. I was yet to find my confidence. Okay. Okay, because I felt like, before I would go to pageants, I felt like everybody sees something in me, maybe I don't see it, because everybody keeps pointing me to that direction. So how about, because I, sometimes I realize that, it takes people to see the things in you mm -hmm. because sometimes you are always clouded with the what's going to happen and what's in the past and what's the fear of mm -hmm. the future and you forget to live in the present that you forget about yourself finding yourself so sometimes the people around you they tell you that you are good at something and i i would urge all of us not to second guess some of the things except for the negatives sometimes people see the good in you and they point you to it but imposter syndrome can also sneak up on you and go like, uh -uh, that's not yeah. it. So I feel like if people tell you that, okay, you are Miss Ghana, you are Miss Malaika, you are blah, blah, blah. Take. Pay attention to it. Actually 
analyze it and try to take a step towards it. If it doesn't work, you can come back. Life is really not about societal timelines. It's about your timeline and what works for you. I love that you got it into this because my next question is about your role with Black Sheep Foundation. Right. How did that come about? Were you already doing stuff in the nonprofit aspect? How did you get that role? And how do you think that role has um, changed you and the way you approach things now? Because right now you're a boss. <laughs> and you have the young people looking at you, looking up to you. No, because right? it's, um, I think it's, it started from my mom. Okay. Because my mom takes people in, people that she doesn't know, people that she's never set eyes on. When you Take, say takes them in. Yeah, I saying know. like, we've had people live with us so many times. Like, come live with us and then they make it and they leave. They, break, they, they actually start a family and all of that, right from, from starting from my mom's. Okay. So I have seen people who do not have anywhere to stay. Sometimes they even like, I want to stay in your, in your kiosk. Like, I want to, you know... And if you can help them, you don't need to have so much to help people because you can use your standing as a human being, the society you find yourself, the space you find yourself, to actually solicit for help for those people. Yeah. You don't have to do it by yourself. No. So what, what is your role? What's your role? So right now, I just took on the role as a CEO. Okay. So what it means Tell is that right now, it. I am going to steer the direction like I'm going to steer the company or the, the foundation yeah, what, what, into the what direction. Do do? What does the, what do you do in the foundation? Yeah, like, what does into the, the direction do? that the foundation wants to go to. So we have adopt before I came in, they had adopted an orphanage okay. that you're taking care of. They, they send them stuff every quarter, which is every three months. They send them food stuff. They send money to the caretakers. We're in constant contact with the caretakers. And this is an orphanage in East, uh, Eastern region. Okay. We do, random, um, how do you call it, donations. Even we have one coming up where we are building two boreholes for two villages in the Eastern region. I am doing a clothes drive where people are donating clothes. I have so many clothes in my house right now. We are sorting them out. When it's ready, we take them to the, it's, it's, to me, it's more of an urgent need because they don't even have water, as in drinking water. And there's one borehole that is serving the whole village. Yes. Wow. So we are trying to build two boreholes for them. And then we realize that they don't just need boreholes. They need other stuff as well. Even if it's chair. Like, honestly, it's a village. When I heard that it was a village, I thought, okay, it was a village, but like my village. Because my realize, village. Yeah. Because, you didn't realize, yeah. I mean, my village, they have village. things. They have what pipe flowing. But these people don't they have don't. it. That's really sad. Yeah, so. But well, it just got a little tense over here. Yeah. But we're still here. <laughs> it's still, honestly speaking, with Della Sade. Yes. Yes. We're about to go on a quick break. When we come back, Della, you're about to answer honestly. The, the question. questions? Plain to you. Hey. Hey, they want to know you. <laughs> so you promised. Okay? Oh, yeah, Second yeah. Today is Ava Kuma Dassin. This is Honestly Speaking. I'll be right back. Honestly speaking, with your favorite girl, Abba Kuma Datsun, and I'm here with ex beauty queen, Della. Let me not mess up with the last name. Della, right now it's me and you and your fans. <laughs> There's questions here for you. Remember Let's what you have said? it. Let's have it. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Nana Ama Ajekum from Taifa wants to know your fitness routine. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's easy. <laughs> that, that I can answer. Okay, go. So on Monday, I have leg days. Leg, huh? leg days okay. on Mondays. Tuesday, I do CrossFit, and then after that, I do upper body. Okay. Wednesdays, I do RBT, which is like resource-based training, okay. where you test your endurance, speed, and Five strength. And okay. And so after that, I do, so I, that is like an hour, almost okay. an hour, or let me just say 30 to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So after that, I go and do cardio. Mm -hmm. On Thursdays, I don't go to the gym. Those are my rest days. And then on Friday, I have my posterior where I do like everything concerning in the back. Okay. Lower back, hamstrings, calves. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so and I and like I eat in moderation. I don't just eat too much. I eat anything, but, but I eat moderation. in moderation. So please, Nana Majukum. Oh, what's your Monday to Monday or you working out? Okay. Um Sheila from Kaswa wants to know one of your favorite roles you've played and why. 
for now, I think, hmm, I can't pick a favorite because it's all, I think maybe Mansa has been the most interesting one. Maybe because of the fact that I took over from someone and then I have never played someone who was one delusional, two crazy, three mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was challenging to begin with, but I think I, I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, and then he spoiled it, so I, I don't know what it. you're talking about. He spoiled it, he spoiled it. Um, William from Jamestown is asking, what's the funniest comment or DM you've received on social media? Uh, there's, there's a lot of funny funny ones, aside the fact that people will be calling me my wife and all of that. And I think someone was like, Yashishen is sent to say Bible verse. Hey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's like I think that's like the top tier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then another one says who charred you actively. Hey. Yes. Yeah. So I'll be using it on people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when they send it, you use it. Eh? Ah, I'm yes. getting you. Ivory from Labadi wants you to tell us some of the misconceptions about beauty pageants you've heard of. Yeah, I think to some extent the mix the misconceptions can be true. It's not a misconception if some of these things happen. People don't just say things, but it is how you you handle the the new position or the new face that you're in. Because definitely, when you get into the limelight, you have people approaching you. Because I heard they said when you go to pageants, people will pimp you and stuff like that. People will approach you with all sorts of juicy proposals, mm -hmm. you know. But it's up to you to utilize your brain and yeah. no focus like knowing where exactly you're going to if you're going to cast why you won't take Medina out I feel you exactly yeah. so basically Baron Jr. from Medina hey right <laughs> wants to know what inspired Black Curve um I like money Period. <laughs> yes, I like money. Period. And growing up, I've always tried to make money for myself. Like even when I was in primary school, I used to tie Cyrillac and needle, so take it to cute. school and sell. You're so cute. In secondary and school or junior high school? No, primary. Hi. Junior high school. Been looking for money for long. <laughs> Listen, I like that. I like nice things. And so when I sometimes I get maybe I sell like let's say a whole container of the Cyrillac in my class like in a in a week old, and then. I just go and give it to my mom. I want these trousers. Buy oh. it for me. Because I, I don't like the fact that I ask you for something and then it keeps long. So that and I think I have been more, I have been business oriented since I was a child. Because when I was in high school too, when I'm, I'm coming back from um, the house, I buy safety pins at the station and I come and sell it for my people in the school. <laughs> because You've safety been a pins, from those long. are the things I find an avenue and then I, pre I, I answer the question, mm -hmm. like the, the need. Mm -hmm. So the safety pins, everybody, every time they were losing their safety pins, and then mm -hmm. they always have to go outside of the dormitory to buy it. And sometimes when you get out of the dormitory and your belt doesn't have a pin, the seniors will punish you. Uh, so, so you saw the pro problem. Uh, yes, you come to my solution. dorm rather, because you're still in the, host, the dormitory, and then you Period. buy the pin. And then I sold it, uh, let's say, 10 pesos cheaper. Oh, yeah. scale. Girl. Gifty Lovett is asking if you believe society puts undue pressure on women to achieve unrealistic beauty standards through body enhancement procedures. Do you want me to take the question again? I, 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 I get, get the question perfectly and I feel it's, I don't, I don't know why you should be pressured by society. I mentioned earlier on that you shouldn't be pressured by societal timelines as well. Like you can't, the fact that your daughter married at 20 doesn't mean that I should also marry at 20. So the fact that you married at 20 or finished uni by 20 doesn't mean that I have to finish uni by 20 if I don't know what to do at uni. Mm -hmm. You get it? Because some people, I feel like you, you should even have a gap here to really rethink about what exactly you want to do as in the career, like with your Cause career. Because a, a lot of people go to uni and then when they're, they're so done lost. working, you ask them, oh, what did you study? And what they are doing and what they went to school for exactly. is the opposite. It's a problem. Yeah. So I think if society is putting undue pressure on you, should, you think society is putting it undue pressure on then you are really focusing on the, on the wrong, wrong things. things. Yeah. Because if you are more of self-awareness, self-actualization, you, you will come to love yourself for what you what you have and who you are yeah. and you build on it from there if you think you want to go and 
do you can get into the gym people build their confidence through the gym it's and true. i know that i know people will be like eh, we can't afford the gym and all of that can work so you can home. start running on yeah. the street like i i feel like if you love yourself you won't go and do that to yourself honestly because cutting your body you will never remain the same mm -hmm. i've had a surgery before i had an abdominal surgery and i've never been the same like first i used to lift very heavy now i can't I feel you. So people who are cutting themselves, going under the knife to look a certain way, all the best to them. Mm. Yeah. All the best to you. Um, <laughs> let's see. Okay, Elam from Ebri wants to know how you got into content creating and what are some of the challenges you faced as a content creator? Uh, I wouldn't say they are challenges, but a learning curve. In as much as at that time it would be a challenge, is a learning curve. Sometimes... You get approached and let's say the money that you want to charge isn't what exactly what you envisioned. And then the people also have, they want to build a shack, but they're giving you uh, that of a fish. It's, it's usually payment and, you know, arriving yeah. at clients. So I think what helped me was the brand positioning. So when people begin to want to associate with your brand, you won't have to go and be looking for brands to come because i i remember some, when i sometimes on black hair people would dm me they have like 2000 followers they want to be associated with my brand but i go through their page and i'm like I, my black hair is is like a i treat it as a low budget place you can buy things for as low as 29 ghana cities on that page 15 cities i have earrings going for 15 cities and all of that because the main aim was to sell nice nice things affordable luxury so if you are you want to be a content creator i feel like you should create a brand for yourself let's say your target market is going to be maybe restaurants like how these days food creators are all over the place yeah you can also start something find a need and create a niche around it and then you're fine lovely um daniel from teshi is asking what's the craziest thing you've done for a role or has been asked of you to do for a role Crazy? I, I don't think anything is crazy when it comes Girl, to acting. No, but I don't think I, I, I haven't done it because I, I, I don't smoke. And there was this rule for like a short film where I was asked it to smoke. And I said, I can't do it. We'd have to find an alternative to smoking. So yeah, okay. I think that's. Um, Daniel again wants to know the next project for Black Sheep Foundation and how can people get involved yes yeah, so if you go to the, go to the black sheep foundation page on instagram we have updated the page on what our next project is it was supposed to be this month but we are still like gathering resources and we are still gathering the donations from the people so if you want to be a part of it we are creating a page for volunteers that so when you text the, the black sheep foundation page we add you to the volunteers page and then yeah Okay. But we are we are we are not looking at crowding the page because we don't want five hundred people and then when it's time for work it's only fifty people that show up. Yeah. We don't we don't want that. Yeah, I hear that. Mm. Um Sarah from Hartro wants you to tell us how do you see the fashion industry evolving in Ghana? Um red carpet events, fashion events and the likes. I I don't really get the question. Like is it I mean, about events or it's about so it's, she says sarah so she says she wants you to tell us how you see the fashion industry evolving in ghana let me just keep that down okay um i think people are being more daring now that's true with, with fashion I, I i see that a lot in the ladies but the men most of the men are still conservative because they don't want to be tagged a certain in a certain light which is understandable but i feel like you, you can be more we can be more expressive in our fashion and not copy blindly look at your body shape and all of that because some people wear things that you don't know, really flatter, flatter their body yeah. so i think but i think people are actually um putting more effort in their looks now, which is a good thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Sarah again is asking, what advice would you give to young people struggling with mental health from social media pressures? I think you've spoken about this. Yeah, before. but you should pray. I like that. It's true because if you don't pray, you're not building any wall around you and anything can just penetrate. Let me give you an example. I went, I think maybe for like, I was filming for like a whole month and I wasn't really praying. 
got to a point I was so frustrated. Like I could cry because I'm trying to do everything by myself. And you see, that's the thing. As a human being, you can't do everything by yourself. So every time you pray and you thank God for his help and you ask him for his help, you would, you would go through it, like you sail through without even realizing the hurdles that you are even able to do. Because if you're doing it by yourself, trust me, you, you break down. It. Yeah. And that's when the mental health, depression and all of that comes in. Like you feel like you're in a dark place. Yeah. Yeah. So, so pray. yeah, pray and ask God for help. Sarah, she said pray. Okay. Pray. Um, King Henry from Aflawo is asking, what will make you cheat on your people? Wait for her answer. Hey, what's it make you cheat? Hold on, King Henry, you've given me job. You, are, you will pay me. She, he said, I should ask you what will make you cheat on your people first. That's Which the people? first part. I guess your your partner. Um, I don't think I would ever do that. I don't, don't think, think I'll ever. ever no, if I'm in a committed relationship with you. And I'm not, um, I'm not enjoying, or I'm not, I'm not okay with it. I'll leave, rather than cheat, because okay. I wouldn't want you to do the same thing to me. To me. So yeah, what, what, what I won't want you to do to me, I won't do to you. Okay, he has a follow-up question for me to ask you. Even if they pull a guy on you to cheat, a gun, a, I mean. Okay, maybe probably. it's a gun. Yeah. Why would I do that? I don't know. Ken Henry, what's this question? <laughs> what's this for? question? Eh? So are you coming to pull a gun on me? <laughs> I have a last question personally. Okay. What is it like working with your sister? Oh, my sister. Yes, because I don't know. Are you both? Um, yeah, social we have media? an event. Yeah, we have an event company. Yeah, what was it like working? Because both of you are so pretty, and I just wanted to know. Thanks. Hey. So it's, you know, as sisters, when we if we fight at home, work we don't. Oh, you do. You are able to separate it. Yes, because okay. we are looking the for money. money. <laughs> Yeah, but we so before we leave the house, I'm like, so what are you doing today? What am I doing? Tell me so that I don't go and do something and contradict whatever instructions that you've given because we have workers as well. So yeah. when you go, you tell them to do this. Okay, me too. When I go, I'll tell my put to do this and then smooth. That's it. That's nice. So this has been the honestly speaking segment with the lie, and she did speak honestly, right? Yes, she did, she I did, did lie. Did, 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 did. You guys don't scare me. Ah. <laughs> Bring more questions. <laughs> Let's ask a deep, deep ones. Mm -hmm. But we'll be right back. When we get back, we're doing rapid fire with Della. Um, stick and stay is Abba, and this is Honestly Speaking. Welcome back, guys. It's still honestly speaking with me, Abba Datsun, and I'm here with Della. Della, are you ready for rapid fire questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have three seconds to answer. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We are doing this. Shit, shit, shit. Shit, shit, shit. We are ready. On your marks. Get set. Get set. All right, go. Jay. Zombies or vampires? Hey. One, two, three. Uh, no, no, <laughs> we're no. ready. We're ready. Wait, wait, wait. Let's start again. Let's what start. is this? Start to talk. <laughs> are you ready? Okay, wait. Let me think about the first one. Brief, 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 brief. Brief. What brief. the hell? How can mm -hmm. you put two, I told you. two of the deadliest? Ah. You think we are playing over here? Okay, okay, okay yeah. Let's yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. On your mark. Yes. Get set. Go. Zombies or vampires? Vampires. Let's go. Gobe or Wache? Gobe. Singing or dancing? Singing. Telling a lie or being told a lie? Being told a lie. Book smart or street smart? Both. <laughs> Girls, pick one. <laughs> street smart. Aha. Uh -huh. Clothes or accessories? Acc mm? <laughs> clothes. Are you sure? Clothes, clothes. clothes? clothes okay. Yeah. Um, Halloween or Valentine's Day in Ghana? Please, Val's Day. <laughs> Kotoko or hats? Eh? Mm. Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Um, new phone or new clothes? Hmm? <laughs> new clothes. Period. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Dela. It's been me. fun. It was, it was fun. very educative. Yeah. What do you have to say to the cameras before you go really quickly? Please do well to follow the Black Sheep Foundation for more info on um, our next project. You can follow me on my socials, Dela Sade on Instagram, um, Miss Dela or first of her name on Twitter, LinkedIn, Dela Sade, TikTok. You mean just find Dela Sade yeah. and you'll find me anywhere. And remember, that whatever you put your mind to, you can achieve. Believe in yourself. This is not a cliche. Actually think about it, ponder over it, and it will work for you. Stay blessed. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Dana. Thanks for having me. It's been me, Abakuma Datsun, keeping the seat warm for our girl, Anna, on Honestly Speaking. And remember to send in your questions to your favorite celebrities, and we'll have them respond to them honestly. Until then, I'll catch you again another time. It's been me, Abba, and it's been... Dela Sade. And we love you guys. Bye.